<laughs> fish on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good one. Nice. <laughs> that's that fish has got some shoulders. Nice. Well, hello there. Kobe and I are fishing a new lake today. We're going to talk a little bit about Stillwater tactics today. And now, I want you to stick to the end of the video because there are two things and two flies that I do that pretty much guarantee me fish every time out. Now, since I said that, I'll get skunked today, but I don't often get skunked because I have a strategy that I'll share with you a little bit later. But how do you find success when fishing Stillwater? So if you have them, the first thing you wanna do is bring a couple of setups with you, right? I usually have two fly rods with me, one that has a floating line, and generally I'm doing something on top, whether it's dry fly or indicator setup, or another is an intermediate, right? Have those two setups so you could either get the fish that are up towards the top of the water column, and that intermediate or sinking line will help you get down into the water column and get those fish that are down a little bit deeper. So that's the first thing I would do. The next thing I would do is I would check with your state and look at the stocking reports, right? A lot of times, like Fish and Wildlife will point you into the direction. We're on this lake because they just stocked a thousand fish. So our odds are gonna go up in catching fish because we read the stocking report. So I would encourage you to Google your state. I'm sure they probably have a stocking report, especially for these slower days during the winter time. Oh, there we go. That's a nice fish. Sweet. All right, now that you know where to go, pay attention to what's happening, right? Fish will give you an idea of what's happening. If you see a fish boil on top, but they don't break the surface, they're probably eating something just subsurface. If you see fish exploding on top, then that pretty much tells you that you need to find a dry fly and take a look around to see what's flying around. And with that being said, look at the water. Some of the best chronomid fishing I've ever had is because I've seen the casing sitting on the water and realized that the fish that are boiling just under the surface are eating chronomids. So tie on a chronomid. So pay attention to what's happening. If you don't see anything at all, right? There's no boils, there's no bugs. That's when you get out your sinking and or intermediate line, put on a woolly bugger, put on a sparkle minnow, put on a subsurface fly, and then go after them that way. But pay attention to what's happening on the lake. Next is you want to vary your fishing technique, right? And not just getting out the floating line or getting out the intermediate line or sinking line. It's varying up what you're doing. Recently, Kobe and I were at Pyramid Lake and we weren't catching any fish. And all of a sudden I was reeling in my line as fast as I could because I wanted to change up and a fish grabbed it. Well, that told me I needed to vary my retrieve and make it a faster retrieve. So do some different things while you're out there fishing and vary it up, right? If you're fishing an indicator and it's just sitting there and nothing's happening, give it a little motion. If you're fishing a like a, like a bugger or a streamer setup and you're fishing it real slow, nothing happens, speed up the retrieve. Vary up your presentation and a lot of times that will find you success. Also, when you're fishing indicators, pro tip for you, Vary up your depth, right? Start at maybe four, three to four feet below the indicator. If you don't get anything, right? You're not seeing any rises. Lower your setup from the indicator. So vary your depth as well. If you're not getting anything after uh, 20 minutes or so, is kind of my rule of thumb. I'm changing up the depth and trying to find where the fish are in the water column. Typically when fly fishing still water, you're gonna use either 5X nine foot tapered leaders, 4X or 3X. And I also prefer Cortland. They've been around for over a hundred years and I just trust that brand. There we go. Whoa, that's a good fish too. <laughs> oh, geez. That's strong fish. Oh, got it. Wow. All right, so what's my secret? The secret two things that I do, number one, is if it ain't working after 20 minutes, change up. I recently was Pyramid Lake and I probably tied on oh, 30 or 40 different flies in those four days that I was fishing. But if I don't get anything in the first 20 minutes, I'm changing up, right? You have to vary it up. If you're not catching fish on that fly, tie on something else. And a lot of times, tie two flies on, right? That gives you 
twice the chance to catch a fish. Pro tip for you, when you're fishing two flies, a lot of times that second fly, I tie some tippet to the end. It's usually the same size of tippet that I'm using on the tapered leader or one size down. That way, if you get snagged, you get one fly back. And it's between 18 and 24 inches on the dropper. And what two flies seem to always work and what I'm gonna tie on today to start out with is the squirmy wormy and the mop fly. Now, I know some of you might think that that's cheating. You know what though? If it catches you fish, who cares? But if you're not catching anything on streamers, you're not catching anything on coronamids, tie on a pink squirmy wormy and tie on a mop fly. And usually those two things, one being the main fly, one being the dropper, are lights out. Oh, that's a good fish. That is a trout. Yeah, no kidding. Nice. Sweet. Very good. By the way, I use Oros indicators. If you're tired of your indicators getting all twisted up, switch to Oros. These things really are one of the most genius things invented in fly fishing in the past 10 years. And by the way, if you want to see more exclusive content, feel free to join my fly fishing club that I just opened up on the YouTube channel. There's three levels to choose from, but go on to my channel, click join. It'll kind of explain everything that you get by being a member of this exclusive club. And thank you in advance for the support. All right, well, I hope that helps you the next time you're out fishing Stillwater. And if you need a little help with your fly fishing cast, check out this video right here. Eight minutes and you'll cast that fly rod a little bit better than you are today. All right, everybody, till the next time, fish on.